Welcome back everyone and I hope you're all doing well. In today's video we're going to be talking about how to take better images in the conditions like you see behind me when it's gray, moody, overcast, or even snowing. That's what I've been experiencing a lot here in northern Norway and we can't always predict the weather on these trips that we invest time and effort into. But that doesn't mean we can't walk away with amazing images. Let's dive in. My favorite things to do in this type of light is look for color. Now it's a bit of cheating here in Northern Norway because a lot of the structures here are painted in vibrant colors, which is not normal for most of the world, like these reds and blues and yellows you've probably been seeing in some of the footage. And also it's nice in a wintry wonderland, which means that everything is white besides the colors that I'm finding that are popping out. Now this is a pretty famous spot here in Lofoten. It's for a good reason. It stands out in this nice white snowy area with some mountains in the background and blue ocean behind it. But the reason it stands out is because it's colored and that light that's happening right now really makes it pop. If it was direct sunlight or sunset light, it would not look nearly as good. So actually this light is the best, in my opinion, for this type of shot. Now, you might not be in Northern Norway or you might be somewhere completely different looking for shots like this, but what you can do is because this light works really well for all of those colors, it could be plant life, it could be a person. So if you have a person in the shot, make sure they wear something colorful, whether it's a red, or a yellow or a blue, make sure they're not wearing any monotone or gray colors and they'll really pop out, especially in snow. But if it's not snowing and it's just gray and overcast, looking for plant life or just things that pop out, kind of thinking about that minimalist style shot is really gonna help enhance your images in this kind of overcast light. All right, so I'm gonna take a few shots of this really quick, but I'm gonna put some other images on the screen that I actually think do a better job at showing you that contrast of color and light. Even though it's nice and gray and overcast, those colors really pop. So here's the shot, plus a few more from this trip. Hope you enjoy. I'm gonna hold on tight to you. All right, so one of the tips I have for you actually breaks the golden rule of landscape photography, which is usually shooting during sunrise or sunset to get those golden hour colors. A lot of the times during gray and overcast light, the sun just isn't strong enough on the horizon to break through. I've been finding myself shooting a lot during the day, like you can actually see behind me, it is midday right now, and some of the light can be absolutely gorgeous. The reason this happens is when those gray and overcast clouds are covering the sun, sometimes the light will poke through and create some nice dynamics on your scene like you're seeing behind me. But other times, even if it's not poking through, when the sun is the strongest, it's creating that nice even light on your images and you can get that, those colors to pop, you can find those minimal shots that we've been talking about and anything in between. So I highly suggest you go out and try to shoot during midday because that might be some of the best time to find the light. You remind me of birds that sing. You remind me of my favorite thing. Following that tip to shoot during the midday, one of the best things you can do is just be patient. This is actually a really good rule in landscape photography in general, because sometimes you're gonna have to go back to spots over and over and over again to get the light that you want, which is actually what I'm doing right now. And if you've been following along on my daily vlogs about Lofoten, you know that I just sat around and waited for the right light a lot of the times. But I'm gonna sit around and wait since I'm awake and out here. So I'm gonna sit around and wait. So yeah, sit around and wait and see if the weather changes. All right, so just like back home, I am sitting and editing in the car. 
When it's gray and overcast and you're not getting any light on your scene, obviously you wanna to try to shoot for those colors, you wanna look for those minimal shots, all the other stuff that I'm gonna talk about in this video, but sometimes the clouds open up just enough to show some light and create some dramatic scenes in front of you, even during the midday. Obviously it's even better at sunrise or sunset. You get that nice golden dramatic light, but even during the midday, sometimes that dappled light will come through and it'll look absolutely gorgeous. And the way you do that is just find the shot that you want or find the area that you wanna be in and you wait and hope that some of those clouds open up. That's not always gonna work. Sometimes it's just super gray and overcast the entire day and you gotta follow along some of these other tips that I've talked about or I'm going to talk about in this video. But for the most part, if you have days where it kind of is opening up and it's kind of moving quickly, especially on coastal scenes and stuff like that, you can wait around for some nice dramatic light no matter what time of day it is. And I think you'll come away with some really amazing shots. Hey, pardon the interruption, I just wanna say thank you for all the support. And if you wanted to help support me in more ways than just liking and subscribing to this channel, you can do that with a little link down below where you can find things like my Patreon. Patreon is a really great way to help support me living on the road full-time and making content like this. You can get credit at the end of every video for helping support me. You can get access to raw edits that I do from time to time. You can even get a postcard from me once a month. So check that out down below. You can also check out my Lightroom Editing Companion. Maybe you're a photographer and you want a more linear workflow directly built into Lightroom. You can also find that in the link. You can find things like my workshops. You can find things like prints or anything in between. All of it helps. And if you can't do any of that, just sharing this video with someone in your family or a loved one that might be interested in travel or anything of that nature. Let's get back to the video. Okay, doing some more waiting. I think I found a shot that's really cool that I was sitting here and it uses this snow that's down below. It gets some of this water, uh, some of these little hotel things here and this giant mountain in the background that was completely obstructed by snow a second ago. I'm just waiting for it to clear. I did get a few shots before, so I'll show you those if I don't end up getting anything while I sit here and wait because I would prefer to get out of the car because the shot that I got, got this little bush here, or it's this one, I can't remember, in the shot and I don't want it. I wanted to get out and take the shot, but as soon as I tested the shot, it, the mountain disappeared. So I'm gonna wait. Hopefully it shows up with some of that really epic light that I'm hoping for and uh, see if we get the shot without these little twigs in it and just kind of have this nice little bottom of the frame filled with white snow. I think it'll look really good if it turns out, so. Not too long after that, the light cleared, the mountain came out, and there was this nice, absolutely dramatic soft light. I absolutely love this light. It's what I've been waiting for and waiting around the entire time of just sitting in the car. And you can tell I get low to the ground. The snow is now filling up the bottom half of the frame. I've got those buildings in the middle and those dramatic peaks in the background. And it's snowing, but the snow isn't really getting captured in the photos, but it is absolutely gorgeous. I love this composition. It was kind of unique in a spot that has many photos taken of it, considering how majestic it is. That is why it's famous after all. I got back in the car and then I waited a little bit longer, kind of noticing the patterns of the wind. And I noticed that when it got gustier and the wind got stronger, it would blow the snow towards the car. So the next time it did that, I got out and I did the exact same shot and I ended up coming away with one of my favorite shots of this entire trip on the very first day. So another great tip for shooting in this style of light is to use a telephoto lens. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a telephoto focal length. It definitely doesn't have to be a 100 to 500 like this. It could actually be 35 mil. The whole idea is to just shoot more intimately and normally 70 mil plus 
gets you closer to your subjects and you kind of subtract a lot of those big landscapes like the one behind me. And the reason you wanna do this is because it separates whatever your subject is from everything else. It makes the dull light in your scene far less obvious because you're focusing on a specific area. Maybe things that are catching your eye like patterns in the shot, or maybe it's just some of the way the snow is on the hills here. That's why I said it doesn't necessarily have to be a telephoto lens. It can just be something that you get really close to. But obviously a lot of the times, just like I'm standing here and looking around, I'm pretty far away from a lot of the stuff around here that I might wanna shoot. So having a telephoto lens makes that easier. The reason this works is just because you're only focused on such a small area that you start to look for patterns, more abstract things, and just different things like such as the ripples in the ocean or maybe a wave in the ocean. Or maybe you're looking at how the cascading mountains are layered on top of each other or maybe the way they cross each other and stuff like that rather than looking for big scenes. And a lot of the times those patterns, those textures in the ground or the patterns of the way the mountains are crossing over each other are what becomes the focal point of the image and the light matters less for those style of images. So think minimal, think more minimalist, which is gonna be my next tip that we'll talk about shortly. Till morning I'll be riding, riding high. Till morning I'll be riding, riding high. tip I have for you is to shoot in more of a minimalist style. This is probably the most difficult tip in this video because it causes you, the photographer, to have to change the way you look at the world. Now for me, this is definitely challenging. It's probably one of the more challenging things that I've been doing for my own photography is trying to find more abstract and minimalist shots. A lot of the times it's easy for me to see big scenes with mountains and waves and know exactly what I want to take, but when I'm trying to shoot more detailed layers, maybe shadows in the snow, or it could be just a wave or two, or maybe it's something as simple as just photographing a house surrounded by negative space of snow. All of those count as minimalist style shots. And there's other photographers out there that have that entire style nailed down. They see the world in that way. I am not one of them. Regardless, when it is overcast and moody out, you can take some absolutely amazing minimalist style images. And that's what I've been trying to focus on while I'm out here. I end up finding bigger scenes, but I'm still challenging myself to take more minimalist style shots. If you need some inspiration for this, I'm obviously displaying some images on the screen now, but you can also check out the Natural Landscape Photography Contest. A lot of the images that do well in that contest, I would consider abstract or minimalist. They're absolutely amazing. They're much better or different than this kind of stuff I take, but those are the kind of things that are inspiring me. And in these conditions of gray and overcast skies, you can find some absolutely great minimalist style shots. Look at things in the abstract, things of, like I said, negative space, maybe shadows, maybe just different lines. Very simple scenes that end up looking simple as a result, but are incredibly hard to find, especially when you're in giant scenes like I am here in Norway, where all I wanna do is photograph these big mountains and big conditions, but I'm trying to find those small little scenes where it's just minimal and interesting. But it's tough, it's tough. So don't be discouraged, challenge yourself, or maybe if you're the type of photographer that shoots that stuff really naturally, this is already gonna be easy for you. So, the next time you're in gray and overcast light, spend some time looking for those minimalist shots. Liquor and sunshine. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope those tips were helpful and it means the next time you go out in conditions like you see behind me, you'll get better images. And as always, if you liked the video, you can like it. Consider subscribing if you loved it. And there's gotta be some rainbows out there somewhere. Definitely not right here though. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go get warm. I hope to see you again on the next one. Later. Yeah.